Tennessee, Tacoma, 45 to 14 win today over UTSA, right here on Neyland Stadium. We told you we'd be back. <laughs> I'm Caleb Jarrow. That's Eric Woods. Eric, off the top, what's your biggest takeaway from tonight? I mean, the biggest takeaway was they finally got off to a good start. That's something that hasn't happened all season, and you saw you saw a good drive against Florida, but then everyone knows how the rest of the game went down. But I mean, you start today, Joe Milton, 81 yard run, the longest run by a true quarterback in Tennessee Vols history. Um, so I mean, that's- You have to respect the 1950s halfback tailback quarterbacks. <laughs> yep. Longest run by a true quarterback with Joe Milton today. Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't think there's any better start they could have had. I mean, like I said, 81 yards, and then you come out, you come back on defense, get a three and out, get off the field, and and then it's just off to the races for the rest of the first half. There was there was a little bit of a lull, as everyone liked to call it, in the press conference today in the third quarter, but I mean, outside of that, I mean, I don't think you can ask for anything better. Yeah, and we actually saw Joe Milton air it out a little bit tonight. I felt mm -hmm. like the playbook was a little bit open. Oh, which, yeah. Against a team like UTSA, it's kind of surprising to have an open playbook, but Joe Milton finished tonight 18 of 31, 209. I want to say he started for his first 14 of 16, mm -hmm. but then second half rolls around. He took a big hit, then they go into halftime. Second half rolls around. I want to say he completed, incompleted, excuse me, didn't complete eight or ten passes in a row. So we saw both sides of Joe Milton tonight. Mm -hmm. I want to say overall, the good outweighed the bad tonight, sure. Eric. Why don't you just talk about Joe Milton and what you saw to him? I mean, we saw a lot of design quarterback runs, which is, I think, every week I've said I wanted to see more of, and it happened, and it worked. I mean, it's, he's not going to break 81 yards every game, but it's promising that they are looking for that because that just adds a much more dynamic approach to this offense. And then, then you see him. He was able to complete the short balls, um, got the screen passes, got that running, and then, and then he found... I can't remember what was the first deep ball, but then he found Ramel Keaton for 48 yards in the end zone, and um, he, he was hitting those. And even even some of the ones that he missed, they weren't they weren't bad throws. Like the one down here, it, it hit in the hands. It was just like I mean, it was a little bit in double coverage, but I mean, I think I think you take that. And I I was I really liked what I saw from him him today. Yeah, you know, Joe, we've seen the worst at Florida, and we've seen him <laughs> have good times. And I feel like tonight is a step in the right direction. I like what you said about him running the ball. With the running back room that you have, if you can make that RPO, now the defense has to worry about your running back, your quarterback, and then the pass, the pass option of the RPO, you're just adding so many more dynamics to this offense. We can't talk about everything tonight without talking about the third quarter. Came out of halftime, gave up 14 points to UTSA. For a second there, it was 31-14. The whole dynamic of the game changes at that point. Like you, like I said previously, Joe Milton couldn't complete a pass. It felt like he started and in, incompleted his first 10 passes and just did not get off to a strong start in the second half. Mm -hmm. But it was isolated to just the third quarter, Eric. What did you see in that third quarter and what needs to be corrected when South Carolina comes? Because bad, one bad quarter against a team like a, any SEC team mm -hmm. really is not going to end in a win like it did tonight. Yeah, I mean you have to think UTSA like they're they're one and two they're one and three, but they're not a bad team. I mean they they are without their starter, so that greatly seventh, reduces their ceiling. Seventh year seventh quarterback. Seventh year starter. <laughs> he's he's been here a minute, but yeah. I mean, you say you say it was negated to just the third quarter, but it was really I mean they did look they started to drive towards the end of that third quarter, so it was really half maybe half, but. And I think I think Tennessee fans probably had a little bit of a heart drop, at, like halfway through, because you throw in they threw in their third string quarterback, who is actually the son of Josh McCown, a lefty too. A lefty. Always looks weird. So I mean, you're not you're not really preparing for you're preparing for Frank Harris or Eddie Lee Marburger, and you get um, you get McCown. So yeah. That, I think that does play a part in it. He did look really sharp, honestly, but I mean, the, the biggest thing was they, they found a way to bring themselves back. Nothing spiraled out of control. It was just that one three and out on offense, and then everything was, everything was back and running. Yeah, and looking at overall yards for tonight as we get into defense, you know, UTSA 80 yards, or 319 yards on 80 plays, Tennessee 66 plays, 512 yards. Your difference is still massive, which is mm -hmm. something to expect with Tennessee, less plays and a ton of yards. I want to say in the first quarter, UTSA had maybe 14 yards, 19 yards. Something like that. Something like that. It wasn't good. So the defense started out 
dominant. UTSA got a ton of their yards in the third quarter. What did you see from the defense tonight, Eric? I feel like we saw a terrible defense last week, good defense the first two weeks, and I feel like we saw something, you know, in between. Tonight. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a perfect day. I mean, um, I think early in the was it the first quarter, maybe the second quarter, where UTSA made a made a good drive down the field, went for it on fourth down, got off the field, but I mean they were in they were inside the twenty yard line and um, threatening to score. So um, I don't. It's I mean it's a it's not a bad offense from UTSA. It's not like it's not. Um, they're not Austin Peay's offense where they just don't have the personnel. They have they have playmakers on the field. I mean they have um, they have a thousand yard receivers pretty much every year. So I don't think it's. I didn't like what I saw on those first two third third quarter drives. Um, that was it was more the defense that I didn't like than the offense because it was like. I think I think on that it was a 15-play, 75-yard drive to come out of the half, where I think they completed four third-down conversions, and that was kind of like it was kind of like oh, this is Florida again. And took seven and, and a half minutes exactly. off the clock. Like, so they were rolling down the field, and I think you bring up a good point because even Virginia Austin P the offense had struggles, but neither Austin P nor Virginia scored. Mm -hmm. And tonight we saw the offense struggle at a halftime, and then UTSA comes out puts up a touchdown, and you're like, oh, no, are we going to get to see the backups? What's happening? Yeah. And then they put up another touchdown, and they're like, all right, 31-14, Joe Milton played in this game entirely longer than he needed to. <laughs> and we'll wrap up on this point because I'm sure we're getting long yeah. here. But staff writer Jack Church will be writing all about Nico as soon as we finish this video. What did you see from him tonight? I mean, shoot, he went, what was it, like two passes? Yeah. yeah. 0 for 2, and he got sacked. The sack was kind of scary. Here's for context. Fans were chanting, pass the ball, pass the ball. <laughs> I didn't third hear down. that part. Yeah, third down. Tennessee decides to pass the ball with Nico Iamaliava, and he gets absolutely pummeled by a blindside sack. Yeah. So from the little bit we did see, I felt like his pocket presence was okay. He moved around well. One of the balls, I think, hit the receiver in the hands. So you can't really say Nico in, didn't throw a good ball. What did you see from him tonight, and wh where do you think the missed opportunities were to get some of these younger freshmen in against a lesser opponent? I think, I mean – you can't really take much away from Nico's performance. You did see the one where he did he ran out of the pocket. That that's a good sign. It it looked a little bit what, like the pass to Ethan Davis in the spring game, but um, it, obviously it was incomplete, but you see that you see that ability to make plays for him. And that's that's his biggest strength. I mean, you don't he's not going to sit there and and sit down in the pocket and just throw it all day. He's going to he's going to make plays. So you you see that a little bit. I think me personally, I think he should have. As soon as Joe Milton went down in um, at the end of the at the end of the first half, uh, he he went down and holding his knee. He propped right back up, but he was he was he, he was visibly. It was a big hit. Yeah, it was it was not a. I think I think Nico should have been after that point, at least if not that, to open the third quarter and like I mean you're up 31 to zero at the time, so why not? Like I don't know. It's. It's tough. I'm not. I'm not a coach. I'm not paid to make these decisions. You, there's still there's still growth for Joe Milton at the same time. So that could play a part into it. But I think in games like these, like you missed with Austin P, like you missed with Virginia, they couldn't. Or Virginia, yeah, it was Virginia. Um, you couldn't get you couldn't get him in the game. And now you're probably gonna have to wait until UConn to get him in. So. Yeah, and by that point, I mean, the season's about done. I mean, you're yeah. late November, that's homecoming. It was these opportunities, like you said, this game tonight, UTSA, Austin Peay, even Virginia to an extent, who's basically an FCS team, mm -hmm. and you saw it on the field. Like, Nico should have been in those games getting reps. Mm -hmm. Freshman should have been in those games. We saw more Cam Seldon, Ethan Davis. And I think Joey Halsey talked about it, which I guess Nico got a little bit of it tonight, but you want those guys on Nealon, on this field, in Nealon Stadium, <laughs> have their adrenaline spike, and then have them relax and just exactly. play football. Nico got that a little bit tonight, but by the time he came in the game, I mean, it was maybe two, 3,000 yeah. students and us left in the stadium. So Seven minutes left on the yeah, clock. Yeah, like you don't get that same experience. Tonight was a night he should have got more reps, mm -hmm. but third quarter, you have the, the lackadaisical play and the lulls, and you don't get that. But unlike Nico, we're on the field every Saturday night getting our reps in. <laughs> For Eric Woods, I'm Caleb Jarrow. We will see you all next weekend at Neyland Stadium.